CataractCoach.com. Technique for Irish prosthesis. Helpful pearls to get this large Irish implant into the caps or bag. So you can see in this case, the cataract's already been done. There's very little Irish tissue remaining. The capsule has been stained, but look, not tripan blue. It's been stained with ICG, endocyanin green. And part of the reason is that using the tripan blue dye does stain the capsule, of course, but as you know, it makes the capsule a little bit less elastic and more fragile. Using the IC green, you're able to get that capsule stained, but also keep the capsule flexible. You saw a capsule retention ring was just placed inside the capsule bag. And now coming up is gonna be the IOL. So this patient had some sort of traumatic experience previously and has resulted in loss of the iris tissue. So here comes the lens. It looks like a three-piece silicone lens. Looks like a soft port lens from Bausch & Lomb going in the capsule bag, and that's going to be centered nicely. And now, ready for the iris prosthesis. Now, there's a paper that was published here from Dr. Henrique Amaral that shows that in the bag injection overfold technique, how to get this big prosthetic iris in the capsule bag. And now this video here is Dr. Richard Sayeg from Rhode Island, USA, and we're going to watch his technique in doing this. And again, the big challenge here is the capsular bag is obviously delicate and fragile and needs to hold that IOL, the CTR, and of course, on top of that, it's gonna hold the implant. Now, using an intraocular measuring device here to figure out how big you need to make this prosthetic iris, and sometimes you can get these in a larger size and you can trefine them down to the size that you want or the overall diameter that you want. So careful measurement's important. And notice that he's measuring inside the eye. So the corneal magnification effect doesn't really have much issue there. Now, the rexus is good size, about five to five and a half millimeter rexus, which is great. Arguably, in a case like this, I may make the rexus even bigger. And I'm thinking because you're gonna have that implant of the iris, the prosthetic iris in the capsule bag as well, it has, let's say, a four millimeter pupil. So even if you have a six or six and a half millimeter or seven millimeter rexus, you'll still get protection of that optic and keeping the optic of the eye wall in the capsule bag because in front of the optic, of course, is this big iris prosthesis. So here injecting inside the eye, because it's been folded up and placed into an eye wall injector, getting it importantly under that nasal Capsular rexus edge, there it is. And now you can see the benefit of that green dye staining. And now you're going to open up the two side wings and then we'll go opposite from the main incision using some microforceps to help get the sub-incisional space done. So here you go, going inside the eye. Now this requires a little bit of a manipulation. And so two paracentesis incisions. And you can see trying to get this big thing in there, opening up the two side wings. I like that and that'll open up nicely. And again, using plenty of viscoelastic here. If you need extra viscoelastic, feel free to instill more. But you can see now that you're opening up that iris prosthesis, the two side wings are now open. Now all that's remaining is the sub space. So a lot of people have done um, great work in this field with these prosthetic irises and given us a lot of good information on how to implant them. And you can see it's kind of tough. It's a little bit bulky. And of course, you gotta be very careful that anterior lens capsule here is only about 14 microns on average. So it's also very thin, not quite as thin as the posterior capsule, but still quite thin. A smart move there of extra viscoelastic going inside to keep that eye completely inflated. And now here's the micro forceps going opposite the main incision. So paracentesis about 180 degrees opposite the main incision. And that can be used to grab that pupil margin and then implant that or pull it back, retract it, and get it into the capture bag. And again, there are techniques like the paper we showed you from uh, Dr. Henrique, how you can do a fold over technique. And so a lot of good videos out there, good information. We had a cataract coach video on here a few weeks ago showing a different surgeon and his technique. And of course, we just want to present you all the possible information here. So here's where you pull it back. And now you, should, you want to fold this thing over. There's the fold over. And that makes its overall size a little bit smaller. And now it can go in the capsule bag. Look at that. Underneath the bag, open it up. Beautiful looking result there. That looks just fantastic. And now obviously this pupil is fixed, doesn't dilate. 
But that's a, a sufficient enough size that it's going to cut down on the glare and give the patient a little bit better visual quality. It also looks very good from a cosmetic perspective, from conversation distance. So the patient's about a meter away from you. And then also it's going to be a big enough dilation to allow your full examination of the posterior segment of the eye to examine the retina, even the retina periphery with wide angle imaging. So everything looks good here, removing the viscoelastic, and I'm sure this patient's going to be very happy. And of course, that green dye will slowly wash off in the next couple of days, and that just looks beautiful. Thanks for watching.